Okay, we're out here today cleaning some engines. Brian, this is your engine. Uh, Larry, I got you next coming out here. We're going to see if we can give this a quick bath and then uh, we'll get yours, Larry. And then we'll start the machine work on both of these. Uh, this one is super grimy, so we're going at this one first. Got it soaking it super clean. And uh, we'll go at it with the hot water. Okay, Larry, here goes your engine. Uh, washing it down real nice so we can start the machine work. Brian's is almost finished over there. And we'll get your squeaky clean and then we'll start decking it and uh, continue on with the rebuild. And then we'll just start blowing it and see where it lined up. But, uh, overall, it looks pretty good inside there. And this engine I have for you, Brian, looks very clean inside. Uh, I believe it's 30 over right now, and we're trying to clean that up as small as we can. But uh, I'll get both of these cleaned up, and uh, we'll give them a better assessment once we uh, get them cleaned. Okay, I've got both motors back in the shop. Larry's engine has a broken stud there, and a broken stud there, and the one I took apart for Brian, we got a broken stud. Uh, broken bolt on the water pump but the engines are clean enough to start machine work and then obviously they'll get cleaned again but uh, they're clean enough to start the machine work and uh, we'll get jamming on those I am putting together Steve's engine right now and then I've got Mark's engine uh, coming after that but uh, don't worry guys I will get yours uh, in the mix and um, start machining them and stuff as time allows and uh, trying to get everybody's moving along uh, at a good pace so everybody hang in there motors are coming out of here as fast as I can possibly get them hey guys uh, in the paint booth a little bit I got the CJ5 in the paint booth uh, I'm gonna get the body off today I just got finished putting the rear bow pockets on um, I had to make these because SGI doesn't include them with the body so I got that side I put the other side on uh, I have a passenger seat that I'm fitting no not I'm screwing up driver's seat that I'm fitting uh, it doesn't fit great I gotta make some adjustments uh, I'm missing a passenger seat. Anybody out there has got an early CJ5 passenger seat uh, and want to sell it, let me know. I, I need one. Uh, out of all the Jeeps I have and all the stuff I have, I don't have a passenger seat frame. Uh, I guess if I can't find one, I'll just bend one up. But if anybody's got an original is in decent shape, let me know. Uh, I'd be happy to buy it from you. Okay, guys, we're going to slowly lift the body off. I've got a couple of chain falls set up in the paint booth. I got Maria helping. And we'll just bring it up a little by little. Alright, 
let that sit there for now. Chassis. I've got to finish up the steering. Remember the steering we're working on. Uh, the engine, transmission, and transfer case and overdrive is ready to go in. Uh, and then drive shafts. And then we'll put the body on one last time. Uh, I am going to make a special clutch linkage for this one. Uh, you've seen me do that before. I had to cut this section out where the master cylinder goes because that was all mangled up. I got to weld that in. And we'll just keep cruising along on the chassis as time allows. And I don't know, hopefully uh, before September we could start painting. Uh, the spruce tip green metallic on the body and fenders and stuff like that. So, uh, like I say, just as time allows, we're going to be chipping away on this. And uh, right now, I've got it in a good place where I can work on the chassis again. So, more to follow on this one. Okay, guys, we're over on the scrambler right now. Uh, I fit the gas tank yesterday. The skid plate was pretty well rusted through and it appeared there were some pinholes in the plastic tank it was leaking fuel pretty bad uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get a different tank for the back uh, there used to be a company I could get some real heavy-duty 24 gallon steel tanks out of um, they are no longer in business so I'm gonna have to make one uh, I think that's gonna be the best option uh, tanks out there now are just small they're thin it's like they're made out of aluminum foil I don't like them they're too thin and junky. So, Scott, I'm going to make you a heavy-duty one there. Uh, I did get your Ramsey winch fit on here yesterday. Uh, this is definitely a, a two-man unit to put on here. That's a heavy rig you got there. Uh, it does fit okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to make some brackets because this sticks over where the bumper would would bolt on here so I'm gonna have to make some brackets off here for your bumper if you want the full size bumper which would be something about that big uh, I could do that it's no problem to make brackets some guys use shorty bumpers with the winches uh, some guys cut sections off uh, I think the full size bumper looks alright uh, but if you have any other ideas about anything you want, just let me know before I get started on that. Uh, I can make the bumper any size you want. Uh, or just leave it alone and make some brackets. <clears throat> the winch fits good. Uh, it does take up a lot of room. It's going to be extremely close to the grill. You can see the grill mount right here. It's going to be very close to the grill. Obviously, it's going to cover your your parking lights that's why you got these on here but um, it's on there it's heavy I think it's gonna be fantastic uh, I do have the tie rods and all new ends in there um, th so you got everything brand new for your steering it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic brake lines wound up being too short um, there's just there's not enough room if, if you uh, if one axle goes up on a rock or something, it's going to rip the hoses right off. So I have to get some uh, longer braided stainless ones for the front and the rear. Um, I wasn't expecting that with just a, a light one inch lift, but um, I'd rather be safe than sorry and put the longer ones on there. Uh, I have some sway bar bushings coming. I have some sway bar disconnects coming. Uh, so the whole front end is getting finished up. Uh, the winch fits, the steering box bracket I haven't finished yet. We'll get your steering box in there and uh, just continue on. I, I wasn't expecting to, to make a tank, but I really think that's your best option. So we're going to go with a uh, heavy-duty 10-gauge steel tank back there. And uh, I'll show you the process as it happens. Uh, but for right now, we're making little progress where we can. Uh, I'm going to have to get into your engine... A transmission transfer case next but um, I'll show you the process as it happens
Okay, Steve, your engine is coming along. Crank is in, end play is set. Valves are going in. You just saw number, uh, what was that? Intake number three jumping. Uh, three angle valve job, new valves, and we'll get the springs and keepers and everything in there. Uh, I have a new old stock front engine plate on here. The camshaft is in, new uh, thrust washer in there. I've got the double roller timing chain going in there for you. I think you can see that okay. This is about the highest quality one out there right now. Uh, and I put this in all the uh, early and MB engines. Uh, I really like this one. So that's going in there next. And I will get this wrapped up little by little. Um, pistons are ready to go. Uh, I am going to resize the rods for you. I'll show you that when that happens. Uh, then we'll get the pistons on there. We'll put those in. And uh, it's coming along pretty nice. And I will get the accessories mounted on there. Uh, when the time comes, the, you know, the starter, the generator, uh, we'll get an intake and exhaust for that, uh, carburetor, water pump, everything that you need uh, for your Jeep. And uh, I'll take you along and show you more as things happen. So that's all I got for you today. And uh, thanks everybody for watching. Uh, catch you on the next one.